Hi, my name is Jeff, and this is a series of videos on everything that connects to the back of a tractor, or at least everything that connects to the back of my tractor, which is an old Ford 3000 tractor. In a series of videos, I'm going to show you the three-point hitch, the PTO and the PTO shaft, the stabilizers, check chains, draw bar, swinging draw bar, stay straps, and I'll even show you what this thing does. Now in this first video, I'm just going to show you the three-point hitch. So the three-point hitch includes um, three points both on the implement and on the tractor. On the implement side, there are the two lower link implement pins. There's a set of holes up here that takes a pin and that connects a top link bar and that forms a triangle. On the tractor side, the triangle includes the two lift arms and then this top link rocker bar that also has a set of holes that takes the other end of the top link bar. The triangle here goes up here and over there and back over here and the two triangles are connected up at top by the top link bar. Now I want to show you how to uh, connect it up and what series that you would use and I'll go into more detail about each one. First of all we're going to connect up the left lift arm. Usually you connect up the left lift arm first and when I show you the right lift arm you'll understand why. So now I'm connecting up the left lift arm. The left lift arm has a lot of movement. It moves left and right and it moves up and down. One thing it doesn't do, at least not on this tractor, but on some tractors it does, there's an extendable lift arm so that this thing can move backwards and forward. It just makes it a little bit easier to connect up to an implement so you don't have to get your tractor lined up exactly with your implement. I didn't have that, so I spent a lot of time getting this exactly lined up. So, anyways, we lift this up, and you'll notice that there's a problem. This hole right here is way too big for that implement pin. What I need is a swivel ball to go on there. I can get different sizes of swivel balls, different categories. This is a category one. Um, lower in, lower uh, link implement pin. And so I need to match that up with a category one swivel ball. I could get a category two, but I need to match things up. And that gives me an opportunity to talk about the different categories of hitches. Everything on the back of your tractor Everything except for the PTO comes with a different category. Category 0 through 5. 0 being the smallest and 5 being the largest. The only thing that uh, the three-point hitch only goes up to category 4. Category 5 is for the draw bars. Those go up to category 5. So anyways, I put this swivel ball in here like that. Now there are different mechanisms that attach swivel balls. Some of them are um, stuck. You can only use whatever comes with your tractors. Others have ways to change these out. If you happen to have a Ford tractor with one of these little balls, you need to make sure that you take it out when you're just uh, doing your tractor without an implement attached to it because they'll just fall out on the ground and you'll lose them. Anyways, I put that in, lift that up, slide that over if I can. Sometimes it takes a little help. My implement pin has a, another hole that takes another pin. This is called a linch pin. Put that in and that secures it on that side. Now, I want to talk a little bit more about categories. I'm going to switch uh, implements. So this is a boom pole. It's a heavy-duty boom pole. 
fits on the back of my tractor, takes a three-point hitch. And it can either take a Category 1 or a Category 2 uh, hitch setup. So this gives me an opportunity to show you the difference between Category 1 Category 2. Here is the pin. You can see that this pin is smaller than this pin. And so this is for Category 1. This is for Category 2. The holes um, for this are smaller on this side than they are on this side that takes Category 2. Same thing goes for the top link. This smaller set of holes right here is for Category 1. The larger set of holes up here is for Category 2. Don't pay attention to these down here. So the triangle made by Category 1 goes from here to here to here. The height from here to here is less than the height from here to here. Category 2 goes has a bigger triangle with bigger holes and bigger pins. It goes from here to here to here and makes a bigger triangle. That's the difference between Category 1 and Category 2 and of course Category 3 and Category 4 have progressively larger pins, holes, and triangles. Now we're over to the right lift arm, which is what you connect uh, after you connect the left lift arm. Now I've lost some of my movement. I still have left and right movement. I have a little bit up and down, but can't go any higher than that. And that's because my left lift arm is connected, is linked to my right lift arm, and my left lift arm is now pinned down on the ground uh, by that heavy implement. I need something to level this. And what I need is a leveling arm. Here's my leveling arm right here. These can either be a crank or they can be a turnbuckle. So what I have to do is come over here and lift it up crank it until it becomes level with my hole. That, and usually this uh, lift arm or leveling arm is found only on the right lift arm and not on the left lift arm. That's the reason that you usually connect the left lift arm first and then you come by and connect the right lift arm so you can make adjustment, leveling adjustments. So anyways, with that on there, I just slide that over and secure it with another linchpin. Now let's talk about the top link connection. We'll start off on the tractor side. On the tractor side you can see the top link rocker bar right here. It has four sets of holes. One set of hole is right here, and that is, excuse me, one set of holes is right down here, and that connects it to the tractor, and it rocks on there. Another set of holes is right here, and this attaches this um, draft control. It looks like a piston. There's some springs in there. You use that if you're going to pull something through the dirt. Classic examples are a uh, plow or a cultivator. And if you can overcome the tension in that, because there's some springs in there, and if you can overcome those tension in the springs by this top link bar, which will either pull or push on that draft control mechanism, that will then connect up to your lift arms. Your lift arms will either raise up or raise down. Now it's very important if you're a new tractor owner to find out where your controls for your draft control are. Here's mine right here on this Ford 3000 tractor. I have mine up. If I was to push it down like this, then I would end up with draft control. I don't want that. I want it to stay up. The reason for that is that if you have draft control on, 
you no longer have control of your lift arms. Your draft control has that. And depending on the circumstances, your, may, your arms may go up when you don't want them to go up or go down when you don't want them to go down. So unless you're pulling a plow or a cultivator, you need to make sure that your draft control is set to off. Now there's two other sets of holes. These are both meant for, well this one is meant for the top link bar. That's the most commonly used. This lower set's also meant for a top link bar in some cases, but it's also meant for stay straps or limiter chains, which I'll show you in another video. Up here, um, you put a pin through there, and that will connect your top link bar. Also, the same thing can happen down here, but the reason that you would use this one is again related to draft control. If you're pulling a typically a plow, particularly heavy plow, and you want less sensitivity on your on your draft control, then you would attach it down here where you have less leverage on your draft control as this thing uh, pushes and pulls on your draft control me mechanism. Up here is for everything else. So let's go ahead and connect that up. So now we're going to go ahead and connect the top link bar. This is the top link bar. Over here, we connect it with, and again, everything has to match up, it has to be the right category. It's category one top link pin, and this is a top category one rocker bar, and this is a category one top link bar. Put this lynch pin in to secure this. And then you'll notice that this is doesn't quite fit. So what I have to do is I have to extend it. So that's why it has these screws on it. It just allows me to extend the length until I line up with these holes. Now I take this another category one top link pin, stick it through there, and then once again secure it with another lynch pin. Now these holes are a little bit loose for this particular model, but they're supposed to actually be tighter, but it still fits. Now let me show you what this pin is and what this hole is in here for. So you can tighten this by hand if you're just trying to lengthen it, but sometimes you've got a heavy implement on there and you need a lot more torque. So you stick that in there and that just gives you some torque if you need to lift up your heavy implement, either rock it forward or rock it backwards just by doing, by doing that. So that's what that's for. So anyways, that's everything I know about the three-point hitch. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you saw any mistakes, I would appreciate some helpful, friendly comments so I can prove and improve. Uh, I can tell you right now that my rotary cutter is far from being ready to go out and mow. It needs a lot more attachments, and that's what I'm going to show in subsequent videos. The next video is going to be on the PTO and the PTO shaft. I hope you watch that video, and thank you for watching this one.